Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to the Daily Dose of Success God's Way. I'm Erin Harrigan, your Hustle with Heart coach, helping everyone attain real results for total health and helping entrepreneurs align results with God's truth. I wanna thank you for your patience because normally I come to you in the morning, but you know, it has been a busy day. And I'm just learning in this book that I'm reading with my Bible study group, which I'm not that far into it, but I totally recommend it, John Ortberg's Soul Keeping, that there is a difference between being busy and being hurried. And hurried is that uh, frantic energy. <clears throat> so um, while we tend as human beings, and particularly entrepreneurs, to, to wear busy as a badge, um, busy isn't a bad thing, it's just a statement of priorities, but we shouldn't use it as an excuse. But when we're hurrying through life, we're missing the opportunity to be present, and that strains our soul. So just a few cents there. Um, I do want to, before we get started today, let you know that I had the fantastic, humbling, privileged opportunity to be the co-host of... Um, the um, Let's Chat segment on Pastor Kanoe Reynolds' Chat and Chew radio show on the WBGR Gospel Network. And you may have seen that because I shared it as a live while we were recording. And I have to tell you guys, when you know you are walking in the center of what God has called you to as a, as a sorry, what am I doing here? As a God-centered entrepreneur, Man, I mean, it is a feeling of just sheer joy and peace that comes over you when you know that you are walking in his will. And that's what it felt like today to be on this radio show. And now I think I might have the radio bug. I mean, I have a podcast, but anyway, so if you haven't seen that, I really encourage you to check it out. You can see it on the Hustle with Heart group page. You can see it in the Success God's Way group page. I shared it there as well. Um, and you can also see it just as me, Erin Harrigan. So today we're going to talk about, um, we're starting lesson nine. So I've been coming to you from this book, Experiencing Success God's Way by Dr. Charles Stanley. And there are 10 lessons in this. So we're on lesson nine. So we're almost done with this book. But when I finish this book, I have our next Success God's Way resource already lined up and I've been praying over it. Um, and there's uh, I, there are um, five keys to, hey, Joanne, Five keys to good time management because we are all called to manage our time wisely. I'm not going to start those keys today, but I'm just going to start this lesson for us. So this is the successful use of time. And it's it's really asking the question, what does my use of time and how I manage it have to do with my success? Which you might be thinking, duh. But really, what does God say about that? And then how do I balance the planning and the work that I know I need to do with faith? Because as God-centered entrepreneurs, as those of us who are building businesses that honor God, honor God and seek his, and serve his people, and we seek to pursue success God's way, we can get a little tangled up, right? Between like, well, I know I got a plan and do work, but how do I do that and stay faithful? And what does that look like? Hey, KC, so good to see you. So um, let, me, let me go through what this says. And as usual, I'll post the reference verses from this first section. And then we're going to cover this this week. So first of all, success cannot be separated from the use of time. Now, we know this, right? We know all the way back to, you know, seven habits of highly effective people and Stephen Covey that time management is key. And some of us, this is me, discovered this this weekend, have a story and a limiting belief that in order to be successful and in order to make money, you have to give all of your time all the time, right? So you're always trading time for money, even as an entrepreneur. And therefore, when we get busy <clears throat> or we have an inkling that we might get busy. So, for example, if we're talking to 10 people and all 10 of them say, I want to join your team. Sometimes that can cause a fear of success. And here's what I mean. Suddenly, I want you to think about this. You're talking to 10 people and all 10 of them are like, yes, absolutely, Joanne and Casey. I want to join your team. And you're like, <gasps> that's going to be a lot of time, right? But we have to rethink how we use time and how we can leverage time. But we have to be a good steward of time. And we have to remember that time is a gift from the Lord and that God's time looks different than our time. Okay? So 
um, here's what the Apostle Paul had to say about time management. Now, could you even have imagined that time management was in the Bible? It is. So this is Ephesians 5, verses 15 and 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So here's what this means. To walk circumspectly means to be careful in the way that you live. It's about living intentionally, using your time intentionally, not following every whim or every distraction or being in squirrel mentality, if you know what I mean. Like you're rolling along and then squirrel or some shiny object grabs your attention. It's about being focused, pursuing a course of life that is purposeful and to recognize that the moments are important. But what about this whole days are evil thing? It means that the day can slip away from us very easily if we're not conscious of our time. And by the way, being conscious of our time is being conscious of how we start our morning, being consistent in the word of the Lord, okay? Then in Galatians 6, 9 and 10, Paul wrote, let us not grow weary while doing good. As we have the opportunity, let us do good to all. The word opportunity here means making the most of our time. So time and opportunity are vitally linked to success, and that is biblical, all right? <clears throat> so the last thing that I want to talk about is that time is a gift from God. God has given each of us. He has already ordained for us our time on earth period. We don't know what that is. We don't know how long we have, but God who knows every hair on our head, who formed us in our, in our mother's womb before we, before we were even a you know, twinkle in her eye. Um, he has gifted us time and he knows exactly how much time that we have to fulfill his plan and purpose. His time is a gift. You guys, I know we throw this vernacular around all the time. We all have 24 hours in a day. It's what you do with it. But are you truly getting up and realizing the gift that you have by getting up and that you have that 24 hours? This is a total gift from the Lord. We cannot regain lost moments or relive hours. So it is up to each of us to ask the Lord, how can I use my talents and gifts from you in the time that you are giving me in order to fulfill your purpose? So you don't, you, you see, it's not saying, how can I use my talents and gift in the time that I have to best fulfill my purpose. It's about the time he's given us and the talents and gifts that he's given us and to fulfill his purpose, okay? Clearly important for God-centered entrepreneurs. Throughout the Bible, we find references to the brevity of life and swift movement of time through our lives. And don't we live that every day? Like, you know, somebody passes away and suddenly you see everybody posting all over Facebook, like, you know, time is short, life is short, you need to live in every moment. Well, you do. But what if we just started living that way? What if every day we woke up realizing this gift that we have? But we should not be discouraged about that. We should be more eager to make the most of every moment. So here's what it says in Isaiah 40, verses 6 through 8. All flesh is grass, and its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, fades, but the word of God stands forever. So you guys, time is vitally important. How we utilize our time is vitally important. And it's also vitally important. Here's what I want you to think about today. My, my parting action item for you. As you're going through your day, I want you to see if you can distinguish busy versus hurried. Okay? Busy versus hurried. All right? I just want you to think about that. Marinate in that, as I like to say, um, over the next 24 hours. And then tomorrow, we will dig into uh, the first of five keys to good time management according to the Word of God. All right? So, Get on over to Success God's Way. Join our community. That's where we do our weekly dose live. I had a great weekly dose yesterday, actually, from my daughter's dorm room, all about the two most powerful words in any language, I am. I hope you'll get over there. Um, please head on over uh, to any of your favorite podcasting outlets and find the Hustle With Heart podcast and subscribe to it. Um, there are five episodes there. The next episode is going to be recording this week. 
And then lastly, if you need an extra set of hands uh, to help you walk this walk, whether it's attaining real results for total health so that you can honor God with your health and be healthy enough to do the work that he's called you to do, or you're an entrepreneur and you'd like some coaching around aligning your results with God's truth. I am the Hustle with Heart Coach, and I would love to serve you in either of those ways. So let's have a chat. So until tomorrow, have a great Monday. See ya.